Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, greetings to my colleagues in other branches and my students in other branches as well. Uh, so, how is B120? Fine? Good. Going fine. Okay, going fine. You know that we are done with our uh, uh, first three books in B120. You know that? And that uh, today you are starting uh, uh, working on book four, which is marketing. Okay, the marketing book. Uh, Insha'Allah, today you will be covering sessions one and two, according to your calendar. The two sessions should be covered uh, together in one session. Uh, so let's start and see. Book four, an introduction to marketing in business. Okay. Aims and objectives of book four. Explain the role of marketing in a business. Explain various aspects of marketing strategy in a business. Okay. Relate marketing theory as contained in this book to everyday marketing situations with which you may come into contact. Explain how marketeers relate to their stakeholders and what the ethical implications of these relationships are. Discuss aspects of consumer behavior and explain what is meant by a consumer society. Explain how marketing affects the natural environment and how green marketing attempts to reduce these effects. These are the aims and objectives of book four, okay? What do you think about these aims? How do you feel? Hmm. Deep, very deep. I think after studying book four, the marketing book, you will be familiar with what we mean by marketing and other top, many other topics in marketing, inshallah. So you need to concentrate on studying this book so that you can um, decide if you like marketing, if you would like to specialize in marketing, if you would like to get a career in marketing in the future or not, okay? So this will give you, this book will give you the chance to decide. This book will be uh, taught totally, no, nothing is canceled or um, omitted from this book. So in session one, we have five sessions in the book. In session one, uh, uh, the session looks at the nature of marketing, including the meaning of marketing orientation, market segmentation, and the concept of relationship marketing. Session two examines the marketing environments that are internal and external to a business. It's about uh, marketing environment. In session three, uh, you will learn about the consumer behavior and the nature of the consumption. Uh, session four introduces the concept of the marketing mix and looks in more detail at products and services pricing and distribution. And finally, session five covers the responses of business to social and environmental concerns associated with the marketing uh, business function. These are the five sessions. Session one, what is marketing? A very good question. So what is marketing? When I say marketing, what comes to your mind? Marketplace. Marketplace. Selling. Selling. Advertising. Advertising. Excellent. Buying. Buying. Okay. What else? Customers needs. Customers wants. Right? Customers expectations. How to satisfy customers. Right? Yes. Okay. So let's see, all these ideas, we, when we, we say the word marketing, you think of all these points or topics, right? So let's start with the session to, to get a better understanding of what we mean by marketing. All right, here we have the aims and objectives of session one. Explain what is meant by a marketing orientation. What do you mean by marketing orientation? You should be able to explain marketing orientation after finishing this session, okay? Contrast 
this with other common business orientations. Okay, so which means that we have market orientation and you have other business orientations, right? Yes. So you should be able to differentiate between them, to contrast them. Okay, explain the purpose of the marketing segmentation, targeting, uh, positioning, and what this involves. Very important aspects in marketing. Segmentation, targeting, positioning. Okay? Give a brief explanation of marketing information and how this is gathered. How to gather marketing information. How to gather information to be used in marketing activities. Okay? And finally, contrast transaction with relationship marketing. Okay? We have two approaches. Transaction marketing and relationship marketing. What is the difference between them? Which one is better? And so on. All right. The marketing concept. The marketing concept. It's very important to keep in mind that marketing is not only re conducted by the marketing department in the business. Okay? Everybody in an organization should be involved in marketing activities. Why? Why? What do you think? To fulfill the, the need of the customer. To? To fulfill the need of the customer. To fulfill the needs of the customer. And you think that the marketing department alone will not be able to fulfill the needs of the customers? Go ahead. Your answer is very good, but I just, we need to discuss. <laughs> huh. Go ahead. So now you said, you said marketing is, the, it is a task or a job or a function that should be conducted by everybody in an organization. You agree with me? Yes. Okay. So, and you said that without getting everybody involved in the marketing uh, uh, business function, we'll not be able to fulfill the customer's needs and wants. Okay? Why? How to fulfill customer's needs and wants? Everybody in the, in, the, in, the, in the organization should be a clear idea that what the real uh, customer wants. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Very good. Everybody in our organization should be aware of customers' needs and wants. Should be aware of what customers, uh, 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 how, how to satisfy customers, and so on. Otherwise, marketing uh, department will be working in an isolation from, uh, from other parties or from other departments, right? So, now, if the marketing department would like to satisfy customers' needs and wants, however, the production department is not producing according to what customers really need or want, this means that the marketing business function or the marketing department people are not doing anything. Right? Right? Okay. So, having marketing orientation, to, to have marketing orientation, means that everybody should have the customer's needs in mind in all their work activities, even if they, are, they never have any direct contact with customers. Everybody should be customer-driven. Everybody should be customer-oriented. How to satisfy our customers? Okay? Starting from, the, from the, the, the sales person in the store to the chief executive officer, to the top management. Everybody should be thinking of customers, how to satisfy them. Okay? So this is the first thing, and this is what we mean by uh, having a successful uh, uh, marketing orientation organization. Okay? All right. So this follows from an understanding that no business would exist without customers, and that marketing is central aspect of the entire business. If, if we tell them and make our employees in different departments in the organization that without satisfying our customers, the, the business will not survive, everybody will be customer driven. Right? Okay, very good. All right. So here we have different definitions of the marketing business function. Different definitions. Okay, the first one is market, marketing is the management process which identifies, anticipates, and supplies customers' requirements efficiently and profitably. So marketing is what? Marketing is what? Marketing, according to this definition? Management process. Okay, very good. Which, which identifies, anticipates, which means predicts or forecasts, huh? and supplies customer requirements efficiently and profitably. So how many words do we have here? How many words do we have here? Keywords. 
Keywords. It's a management process, right? Yes. Management process. Okay. Identifies. Huh. Anticipates. Yes. Huh. Supplies. Okay. Customer requirements. So the requirements. How to supply them? How to uh, how to supply these requirements efficiently and the profitably? Yes. Uh, efficiently and the profitably. These two words are very important. Why? When we talk about efficiency, efficiency, we are talking about mainly about minimizing costs to 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 do the task or to produce the product, whatever the task you do, production, marketing, whatever to do that with the lowest possible cost. To be efficient means doing th things right, okay? So how to do this to supply, to identify, anticipate, and supply customer requirements with the lowest possible cost and provided that you make profit. Maximizing, Maximizing profits, otherwise you, you are working for nothing, right? You, you can do all these things, uh, um, identifying, uh, anticipating, and supplying customers needs and wants, Without making profits, this means that you are doing nothing. You are not making profit. If you are a for-profit organization, you need to make profit, right? So do not forget these two words in the definition. Another definition that we have about marketing, marketing is an organizational function and a set of processes for creating, communicating, and delivering value to customers and for managing customer relationships in ways that benefit the organization and its stakeholders. So here it's an organizational function. Okay, marketing is a set of processes. Processes of what? Creating, communicating, and delivering value. To create value, to communicate value, and to deliver value to the customer. What we mean by values, products and services. Because when we talk about products and services in marketing, we care about the value of the product. We care about the benefit that we get out of this product. It's not about the physical shape of the product. It's about how you use it, how you benefit out of this product, right? A car is not, is not about this physical shape of having a car or the car. It's about the security you feel when you drive your own car. It's about the facility you get uh, uh, to, uh, and the time, time uh, saving time, saving effort, right? Saving money through having your car, right? Going from this, uh, the, uh, from uh, point A to point B, from home to, to university, from home to work, whatever. Okay, so this is the benefit you get out of the car. So marketers usually think of products and services as benefits, as values. How to create values? How to communicate values? And how to deliver values to your customers? Okay, this is the second uh, uh, definition. All right, all right. All in all, huh? marketing is a range of activities carried out by various people in the business that are designed to understand and satisfy customer needs in a way that allows the business to make a profit or to fulfill other organizational objectives. Sometimes your objective is not to make profit, it's something else, okay? So the marketing should enable you to, to fulfill the organizational objectives at the end. Uh, this is a, a more comprehensive definition of marketing. Okay? Now we understand what we mean by marketing? Yes. Okay. All right, very good. So what do you think about marketing? Nice area? Nice field of study? Yeah. Needs creativity. It needs, it needs persons to be innovative, creative. So how many creative persons do we have here in class? How many marketeers do we have here in class? Manager. You are a manager, but still managers should be creative <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And here we need to talk about different business orientations. You remember one of the aims of this session is to know what we mean by marketing orientation and contrast this orientation to other business orientations, right? Okay. So when we talk about business orientations, we have two main approaches. We have two main approaches. The first approach is the inside-out approach, okay? 
The second approach is the outside, outside in approach. Okay. Generally, in the inside out approach, organizations which adopt such an approach assume what customers need and want. They do not go to the market and try to find out. They do not do that. They think of the things that they are good at, okay, and assume what customers need and want, and then try to deliver what they assume. For this reason, we call it it's an inside-out approach. We assume that customers care about quality, so, so we produce high-quality products without, without going to customers and asking them. Without research, or without, research without anything, we assume we are good at uh, producing high-quality products. Okay, let's produce high-quality products to our customers and they will accept it. Okay? Some, some, and some uh, uh, organizations follow such an approach. Like, they assume what customers uh, need and want. Okay? So, it's an inside-out approach because we do everything inside and then we come up with the product to our customers, to the market. So, it's inside-out. The other approach is the outside-in approach. In this approach, uh, organizations or businesses try to find out what customers really need or want. So they go to the market, they conduct researches, uh, on, uh, they ask a sample of the target segment or a sample of the expected customers, what they really want and need, and they go back to their organizations and businesses to try to produce what customers really need and want. Sometimes they take it back to the market to test it and come back to before launching the new product. This is an outside-in approach because you start outside the organization and come back to inside the organization to prepare what customers really need or want. Okay, so uh, these are the two main approaches, and under each approach we have a number of orientations. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, here, many businesses, or many business organizations use an inside-out approach, which means starting with what the business is good at doing and ending with what they think customers want. Okay? This is one thing. Under this approach, we have three main orientations. The product orientation, the production orientation, and the selling orientation. Okay? All right. The other approach is known as the outside-in approach. Starting with a thorough assessment of the needs and expectations of buyers, and then trying to fulfill those needs and expectations in order to attract customers. The outside and approach include the marketing orientation. Include the marketing orientation. Okay, so here we have two different approaches. We have here different approaches to marketing. We have the inside out and we have the outside in. Under the inside out we have the product orientation, we have the production orientation, right? Yes. And we have the selling orientation. Right. The selling orientation. And the outside in approach, we have the marketing orientation. Agree? Okay. Let's take them one by one. Concerning the product orientation, businesses assume that customers value product quality above all else. So we assume that customers value product quality. We care, the customers care about quality. Like Apple. Like Apple. Mm -hmm. Like some, when you have some uh, uh, watches, like Rolex. Mm -hmm. Okay? And all these things. So, uh, for some segments, for some products, yes, this orientation works. For some products, for some segments. People who, who really care about having some brand names and some products, especially in cars, because, because they feel that uh, they will be more secure if they, go, if they get high quality car, right? Uh, um, uh, in some uh, luxury uh, products, 
and, and so on. Okay, so some businesses assume that customers care about quality above all, uh, and that a business that succeeds in producing better products than any of its competitors will have to do little else in order to attract customers and make a profit. Lower, low prices, convenient distribution, and convincing selling or advertising activities become secondary consideration uh, uh, or totally unimportant. In this case, if we have some people or some segment that care about the high quality product, they will not think of the price then. This is what they assume. This is what some companies or businesses assume. Okay? It might be right, it might be wrong. It might work for, with some segments, it might not. Right? Right? Okay. All right. So this is one of the inside out approach. The product quality is the most important thing. Okay? All right. The second orientation is the production orientation. The production orientation. Here businesses assume that buyers are very price conscious. Buyers are very price conscious. They, they care about having reasonable prices. Okay? They care about having lower prices. All right? So, the businesses here assume that buyers are very price conscious and are prepared to accept merely adequate quality. If you give me adequate quality with low price, I'll be happy as a customer. This is what such businesses assume. Okay. They focus on making their production and marketing processes as efficient as possible. Efficient means with the lowest possible cost. Right? Okay. So, that they can produce larger quantities of products at low costs. This usually means mass production of fairly standardized goods. What we mean by standardized goods? When you do not tailor a product, when you do not customize a product to a specific client or customer, we care, we, we produce just, for example, this marker, we produce it this way for everybody. We do not customize, we do not tailor, we do not change the features based on the customer. This is what we mean by standardize the product. Okay, such uh, businesses produce standardized products in large quantities. Why? Because we have in this case what, what we call the economies of scale. The economies of scale. What do we mean by economies of scale? This means that the larger the number of units produced, the lower the fixed cost per unit. The larger the number of units produced, okay, the lower the fixed costs per unit. All right? Because anyway, anyhow, the business has some fixed costs. The fixed costs will be incurred, will be incurred and will be fixed within a specific range, okay, of production volume. Let's say within a specific range. Now you don't understand what we mean by within a specific range, but you can understand that in, when you study cost accounting, inshallah, hopefully. So, but fixed costs, keep it in your mind like that. Fixed costs are fixed within a specific range. So the company will incur the fixed costs anyway, right? And this fixed cost should be allocated on the number of units produced. All right, when you allocate a larger figure, okay, the fixed cost on, uh, on for example, 100 units, Okay, the fixed cost per unit will be X. When you allocate the same fixed cost on 1,000 units, the fixed cost per unit will be lower than X. Right? Okay, why? Because this is normal. This is normal. When you allocate just it's the same amount you allocated based on, you allocated on a larger number or a lower number, it depends. All right? So uh, at the end, at the end, when they produce in mass quantities, in large units, they standardize the products, they are able to reduce the cost per unit because the fixed cost per unit will be lower, and this way they can offer customers low cost or lower price products. And low quality, right? Adequate. Mm -hmm. This is what they try to say. Adequate, uh, adequate quality. Okay? It's, it's the, issue. the issue here is how customers perceive it. Mm -hmm. In marketing, usually it's how, how customers perceive it. How they perceive the quality of the product. Are they satisfied with it or not? It depends on the segment that you target. You will know that what we mean by the segment now. Yes. Okay? Sometimes for, for a product that, that is very good for me, uh, with adequate quality, for you it's not. You, you, can, you can't buy it. You can't purchase it. You, can't, you don't trust the quality of the product. You will not take it. It differs from one person to another. 
right? So it differs from one segment to another, it differs from the, 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 seg the, target, the target segment for each business. So the critical issue here, how to convince, how to provide the customers with, real, with what re they really need and want. Sometimes you, you produce high quality product, but your segment is not in need for this level of quality, right? Okay, so in marketing usually you should think, it's a two way process, how businesses think and how customers th think as well, okay? You need to understand how they think. So this is about the production orientation. You understand it? Yes. Okay, very good. The selling orientation, this is the third one. Business assume that no matter how good or cheap a product is, not enough people will buy it unless the business makes a significant selling effort, which means that you need to push customers to, to buy the product. You need to uh, uh, conduct heavy, heavy selling efforts, like, for example, promotion, advertising, whatever. It depends. It depends on the type. We have different types of promotional. We have what we call promotional mix. In the promotional mix, we have discounts, we have advertising, we have personal selling, we have different aspects, how to promote the, the product, how to get, attract you, the customers to buy the product, and so on. Okay? All right. So, um, businesses here believe that it's possible to sell almost anything as long as the right sales approach is taking. Okay? So, this is another orientation. In these three orientations, the product, the production, and the selling, all of them are inside out because in all of them, businesses assume what customers need and want. They did not try to find out. Okay? Very good. All right. So here, and here we have the marketing orientation, which, is, which represents the outside in approach. In the marketing orientation, as we said, the main difference here is that businesses do not assume what the potential customer may want, but they actually make every attempt to find out. They, they conduct research, they uh, uh, have interviews with a sample of potential customers, they do whatever they can do just to find out what customers need and want. Okay? Starting with a thorough assessment, as we said, of the needs and expectations of parts, and then trying to fulfill these needs and expectations. Okay? Now we know the difference between the inside-out approach and the outside-in approach. Which is, which is better than the inside and outside? Um, okay. Let me tell you something. Most probably, the outside and approach is better. In most of the situations, it will be better because you have, you, you have some kind of analysis. Specifics. You have some kind of analysis. You, you contact uh, a sample of, communicate with a sample of customers. You have some results based on different uh, research and so on. But sometimes, the inside-out approach is as well important. You know when? When you have a, new, a very new idea, something new, you have a, a, a radical innovation. Sometimes when we talk about radical innovation, we call this discontinuous development or non-linear development of products. Sometimes if you go to the market and ask people, you have a very new idea, like something brilliant. Well, you, go, you go and ask customers, you will not understand or imagine what you're talking about. Sometimes, okay? And some of them will say, yes, we'll get this. Some others will say, no. And actually, they do not. Sometimes, we assume, we as businesses assume that customers really know what they want, which is not true all the time, right? And we assume that when we communicate with them, we know what they know, as if the communication is correct and right 100% without any, um, like we understood what they really want and we, the communication was perfect, okay? All these are assumptions, right? But actually, some customers do not know what they really need and want. When you ask them, they will say, yes, we need this. No, we do not need this. And at the end, they might be in need for this, y you know? Some customers like that. And sometimes when you communicate with customers, you don't get their impression or the, the, the message from them correctly as a marketer, okay? So, some organizations, when they have a, a new idea of a product or a service, which is something very innovative, they decide just to produce it and offer it. Why? Because the nonlinear development of products shouldn't be suffocated 
by all these steps of research. Just do it. <laughs> okay, it's very risky. Of course, it's very risky. But sometimes it's very successful. Okay, so it depends. It depends on the situation. It depends on the, on the sector. It depends on the idea. It depends on different things. Okay, but at the end, at the, generally speaking, the outside in approach, of course, it, it is better in general. Okay, in general. All right. Okay, here we, we are done with different approaches and orientations in marketing. And here we have some terminology that we should go through quickly. A need. What do we mean by a need when we say customer needs? Okay. A need is a perceived lack of something. A perceived lack of something. Which means that you lack something as a customer and you are aware of lacking this thing. Okay? But sometimes we lack many things but we do not feel that we lack them so they are not needs. Right? Okay. So, how to, uh, how to say that we have needs when you have a perceived, a perceived lack of something an individual not only does not have something, but is aware of not having it. Mm -hmm. This is the need. Okay? All right. Uh, a want, a specific satisfier for a need. Okay, now, I'm hungry. I'm in need for food. Right? <clears throat> but you can give me sa any sandwich. You can give me carrots. You can give me apple. Right? You can't give me anything, but I'm not interested in all these things. I'd like to eat from Kentucky, from Pizza Hut, from McDonald's, from anywhere, from a specific place. For example, from Pizza Hut. I'd like to eat pizza. So the need is the need for food. Okay? The one is a meal from Pizza Hut. <laughs> Which is a specific, a specific satisfier of this need. All right? All right. So it's a specific satisfier of a need. Uh, for example, one may be hungry, in need, for, uh, in need of food, but wants uh, a roast dinner. And keep in your mind that marketeers can never create needs. Marketeers can only create wants. Okay? As a marketeer, you will never be able to create a need. A need is there. It's there. Okay? Now you feel, you know the difference between a need and a want? Okay, very good. A product? A product is best thought of uh, not as a specific physical goods, but as a bundle of benefits, such as the ability to get from A to B through having a car, for example. So when we think of car, we think how car facilitates going from uh, um, um, destination A to destination B. Okay? How secure we feel when we drive our own cars, and so on. So it is, it's the, when we think of, of products, when we talk about products in marketing, we talk about the benefits we get out of this product. This is the critical issue. It's not about the physical shape of the product. You got that? So when marketers talk about product or service, they talk about the bundle of benefits they provide the customers with through giving them or providing them with this product or service. Okay? This is about product. Customer, a person or business buying a product, also called a buyer. So the customer is the person or the business that buys the product. The consumer, the person who actually uses the product or could potentially do so. Huh? So what is the difference between customers and, con and consumers? Customers maybe maybe not use the product. Excellent. So when we have, for example, we have an, 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 a manufacturer here. Okay. Here is a manufacturer, uh, manufacturing business which produces product X, okay, and uh, it sells it to a wholesaler. The wholesaler does not use the product, but actually the wholesaler resells it to a retailer, okay, and then the retailer resells it to consumer, okay. So this means that the wholesaler is a customer or consumer, customer. a customer, okay. The retailer. Customer, okay, but this consumer, is this client, or this, the, the last one, is the final consumer, is a consumer. Why? Because this person uses the product actually, okay? 
All right? So all consumers are customers, but not all customers are consumers. Agree? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. And then the market. A market consists of all the actual and potential buyers of the business's products. Okay? So the market, all actual and potential buyers of the product. This is what we mean by a market. Okay? Yes. You are okay? Yes. Yeah. You understand well? Yes. All right. And here we have market segmentation. Market segmentation. A very important topic. A very important topic in, in marketing. All right. So let's talk here about, we have here the market. Here is the market. All actual and potential buyers, right? This is the market. Okay? You are all here. Okay. Do you think that we can have a single business? A single business that will, um, ca that can produce a product that will satisfy the whole market? Maybe. No. Somehow maybe. Like Coca-Cola. Excellent. But Coca-Cola is not satisfying everybody. We have some other examples. <laughs> some others prefer Pepsi-Cola, for example. <laughs> Uh, other people prefer a fresh juice. <laughs> okay, so Coca-Cola is not the typical example in this case. <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk about this. Normally or usually, no. It's very difficult. But in some exceptional cases, we have such products that we call undifferentiated products, like salt, like sugar, like um, uh, soap. Uh, uh, water, uh, like sometimes petrol, mm -hmm. all these things. Although they, they started to differentiate such products recently, they tried to differentiate them, okay? Um, but at the end, if you go to and you did not find cooks on the shelf, you will get any other type of salt, mm -hmm. right? So um, by nature, these products do not need to be very differentiated this, this way. But generally, for any other product, a business, there is no single product that will, be, will satisfy all customers. Okay? Why? Why? The difference between Excellent. Because we have customers are different in their needs, in their wants, in their expectations, in their preferences, in their tastes, in their cultures. All these things affect them. Okay? All right. So, businesses. Accordingly, businesses said that, marketers said, okay, we need to, we need to segment the market. We need to segment the market. Let's segment the market the small group. into smaller groups of customers. more homo homogeneous smaller groups, okay? Let's have subgroups, smaller groups, who are common in their uh, preferences, tastes, and so on, okay? This is what we call, dividing the market this way, we call it market segmentation. We call it market segmentation. Let's see here. The market segmentation is the grouping of customers according to the differences in their needs and behavior. Okay? The assumptions of marketing segmentation, all buyers in marketing rarely have the exact same needs and expectations. Agree? Yes. This is one of the assumptions. Okay. It's possible to identify smaller subgroups of buyers which are more homogeneous in terms of their needs and expectations. It's possible to get smaller, smaller subgroups that are more homogeneous in terms of needs and expectations. Okay? 
it is, it is possible, which is very difficult to, to be done uh, um, uh, or conducted on the whole market because people in the whole market are, are very, uh, um, have very many different expectations and needs. It's easier to satisfy the needs and expectations of smaller, more homogeneous subgroups of buyers than those of the entire market. Yes. What do you think about that? Easier to satisfy the subgroup. Easier. Okay? All right. These are the assumptions of market segmentation. So when I ask you, can you define market segmentation? Okay. Can you discuss or explain the assumptions of market segmentation? Okay, hopefully. <laughs> All right. So what is the difference between market segmentation and target segments? Okay, you will know now. Now we segmented the market, right? Now we segmented the market this way. And we have different bases to segment the market. You did not ask me how to segment the market. None of you asked me. Why? We have different bases for segmenting the market. Let's take them one by one and go through it. And we will cover targeting and positioning as well today, inshallah. So let's see. I will answer uh, your question now in a few minutes. Here is what we mean by targeting. Okay? All right. Targeting is a broad term that is used to describe the process of identifying groups of consumers who are highly likely to purchase a specific good or service. Okay? Let's see. Once homogeneous market segments have been identified, the business must decide which of these segments the business wants to serve. So this is what we mean by targeting. Now we have these different segments here, right? Which one will you as a business serve? Which one? Which one of these segments will you serve? Because you know what? Sometimes the business has uh, uh, limited resources. They are not able to produce various products to satisfy different segments, okay? So they decide to focus only on just one segment. All right? So which one? Sometimes even if you have sufficient budget or sufficient capital, you, you prefer to focus on two or three segments, but you will not serve the whole market. So at the end, after segmenting the market into sub uh, uh, groups, more homogeneous subgroups or smaller groups, you should decide on which groups you should or which, which of these subgroups you will serve as a business. Okay? This is what we mean by targeting. And when we say the target segment, the segment that we serve, the segment that we should attract as our customers, to be our customers. You got that? Okay. So we start by segmenting the market. Deciding on the targets, targeting, okay, and then the, pos the positioning. After market targeting, the business has to position its products so that the perceived qualities and benefits match the needs and expectations of the targeted segment. Positioning. When I say positioning, position. It's about how to position, how to position your product in the minds of the customers. Okay? When I say Mercedes, how do you feel? What comes to your mind? Okay? How do you perceive this brand name? Okay? When I say Mercedes, when I say Four Seasons, okay? So these businesses position their brand name, position their products in the minds of the customers this way. The image of the product in the minds of the customers is what we mean by positioning. How to position, how to put our product in the mind of the, uh, of the customer. How to lead them to perceive it this way, okay? So part of the positioning, now we, we decided on the, the segment that we will target or the segment that we will serve, okay? So accordingly, accordingly, we need to know, okay, this segment has these needs and wants and expectations, okay? So we need to position our product in a way, in a way that will convince the customers with the product benefits and the qualities. The product benefits and qualities matches what you really need and want. You got that? 
this is what we mean by positioning, which is a very important thing. Sometimes you decide on serving this segment, but you are not able to convince them with the qualities and benefits of the product. You are not able to convince them that this product is matching what you, you need and want. Okay? So, which means that you did not do the positioning well. You made a mistake in positioning your product. Okay? All right? Very good. All right. So, here. So, the whole chain is segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Okay. So, how to segment the market? Here we have an activity. Let's take it first. Okay. Try to identify different market segments for shoes and footwear. Different target segments. Different segments. When you, you sell shoes, to which segments? Think about it. Women, men, small sporting, excellent. Kids, excellent. Uh, classic. Okay, or evening shoes, street shoes. Formal uh, uh, shoes based on weather, snow, sh uh, boots, right? Sandals in summer, right? Okay, let's see. Very good, way. I have uh, very good marketeers actually <laughs> in class. <laughs> All right. So we have here shoes, uh, uh, sh uh, shoes. Some common market segments include ladies, men's, and children's footwear. Okay. Street shoes versus evening shoes, all right? Shoes for various sporting activities. Mm -hmm. Shoes for different uh, uh, climatic and weather conditions like snow boots, sandals. Okay? Oh no, you are very good marketeers. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. So here we have, when we talk about segmentation, we need to know how to define segmentation. We need to know how to explain the assumptions of market segmentation. We need to be able to explain the characteristics of market segmentation and to explain the basis of market segmentation. How many points? Definition, assumptions, characteristics of, of markets, a viable market segment, and basis or criteria. Okay? Let's take the characteristics of viable segment. In order to have a viable market segment, the, the, the segment should be measurable. What do you mean by having a measurable segment? This means that it must be possible to define who uh, the members of the segment are and how many of them are, uh, there are. Which means that you can say that I have a market segment of 10,000 customers. Like around 10,000 or 1,000. Or it depends, it depends. On, but you can say it, you can measure it. It's not like that. You sell a product or you select a segment without knowing how measurable the segment is. It's very important to get a measurable segment. Very important, okay? Accessible. The segment you, you decide on should be accessible, which means that marketers must have some way of communicating with the chosen segment. Otherwise, how to communicate, how to deliver the product to them, how to um, uh, um, promote the product, how to convince them that this is the right product for them, and so on. So you need to, to get an accessible segment, a segment that you can communicate with some way or another, right? Uh, yes, sure. If you decided, for example, to sell to one of the European countries and you don't have contact there, you do not go there to, 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 to conduct research, to communicate with people there, you just send the product through an agent or whatever, okay? Sometimes, sometimes, of course this is a, like an extreme example, but sometimes you're not able to access the segment. You don't have access to, to this segment. You're not able to access them. Um, or, or for example, the segment can be accessed only through technology, through internet and so on, and you don't, you're not familiar enough with this. Okay, so how to get the tool to access the segment? It should be, you should have the capabilities of accessing the segment, and the segment by itself should be accessible. Okay, all right. Okay. Because at the end, the se okay, you decided on selling to this segment, but you are not able to communicate with how to do it, how to do that. All right. Okay. Some people who are very busy, like doctors, how to sell to them? 
how to convince them uh, like as a pharmaceutical uh, uh, company, how to sell the drugs or the, the medicine to them, to convince them to prescribe this drug to their patients, how to get them. You should have somewhere or, somewhere or another should have a, a, a mean of accessing those people, those doctors, right? Yes. Okay, and, and so on. The segment should be substantial, okay? The, uh, the segments must be large enough to be worth aiming for. Like, some segments are not large enough, which means that you're not make, making profit out of uh, uh, targeting these segments or out of selling to these segments. So it must be large enough to make profit at the end, okay? All right. Congruent, the members of the segment must have fairly similar requirements with respect to this type of product. Congruent, here we mean that we should have, make sure that they have homogeneous, homogeneous needs, wants, and uh, that they have the same or similar requirements almost. Make sure that the, the group is homogeneous or the segment is homogeneous. Make sure that, this is what we mean by congruent here. They have similar requirements out of the product. So that you can win you, otherwise, if it is not congruent, then the segmentation is nothing. You did not do anything by segmenting the market, right? You're not talking about the same segment. Yes. Stable, the nature and membership of the segment must be reasonably constant. Okay. When you target a specific segment, make sure that this segment, the segment to be viable, it should not be, it should not vanish after some time. What do you mean by vanish? Disappear. Disappear. It shouldn't disappear after time, okay? You should make sure that they are there, <laughs> okay? You start your own business today, and after a month, they are not there. After a year, they are not there, okay? Like, for example, for example, when we have some foreigners in Egypt, some foreigners from uh, another country, okay, living in Egypt for a while because of one, one reason or another, in, in, in political instability, economic instability in their, in their home countries, okay? So they stay in Egypt. Some of them start uh, uh, the, um, a business of restaurants, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, offering food of, uh, of their home country, okay? Mm -hmm. If this food matches the needs of those people only, this segment is not stable. Yes. Why? Because those people sooner or later will leave. Yes. Right? But if this but if this food matches the tastes and preferences of different segments like Egyptians mm -hmm. uh, uh, and other uh, nationalities, okay, then it, it is a stable segment. Okay? So it depends. You know what we mean by stable? Stability of the segment? Okay. They will, Apple company is still. I'm sorry, Apple? Apple yes. What? Apple company is one of the They have stable segments, of course. Of course, they have stable segments. Because they, they sell, of course, they sell uh, different things that people, like for different segments that are constant and stable. They will not disappear. Why should they, uh, people disappear in the field of technology? You know? Every day we have something new. <laughs> so, um, all right. And here we have what we call segmentation criteria or basis. Segmentation criteria or basis. How to segment the market? You can segment the market using the geographic segmentation, which is based on what? On location, geography. Okay. This segmentation, uh, seg this segmentation groups potential customers according to where they live. Because different geographical locations vary in characteristics. Now, you will sell for European countries, for American countries, uh, you, you will sell inside Egypt. It depends which segment do you, do you target. So sometimes, sometimes when you segment the market, you segment it based on geography. So if we are talking about, for example, about the whole world, so we can divide the, 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 the market, we can divide the market into uh, European countries, African countries, Australia, and America, right? So different segment based on on geography, in the same country, in the same country here in Egypt, for example, segment the market in Egypt, the Egyptian market into Delta and Upper Egypt, for example. Okay, why? Why do we do that? Because difference in geography means difference in weather. Difference, difference in everything. So if we produce um, uh, coats for ladies, yes. winter coats, 
if you are selling to European countries, the winter coat sent to European countries will, will, will be different from the ones that you sell here for ladies in Egypt because the weather is different, totally different, right? Yes. Okay, winter in Egypt, the Egyptian winter is different from the European winter, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay, even in cars, the engines, yes. right? To get there, we have like snowy weather there, we need to have some engines of a specific type that will enable people to, 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 to drive the cars and to start up their cars within a few minutes in the morning, although the, the weather is snowy, right? If we got this car here in Egypt, <laughs> so the weather here is very, is very, yeah, it's very hot. So this does not work in Egypt. Okay, and so on. You got that? All right. So this is what I mean by geographic segmentation. When you segment the market, or divide the market into smaller groups based on geography. What about the demographic segmentation? Usually, when we talk about demographic factors, it's about the population structure. Do not forget this. Okay, so here, this segmentation uh, uh, groups people according to the to factors such as age, gen gender, lifestyle, education, and the economy. The economy of the country? I'm sorry? The economy of the country? The economy of the country? Oh no, well, here we are talking about the, like the standard of living. Yes, middle class. Like the income that they earn. Okay, so this is what we mean by the demographic. Segmentation. So when we, we, you can segment the market into male, female, if you're talking about gender, uh, babies, children, teenagers, uh, mature and old age people, if we are talking about age, right? So segment, so you can decide, okay, um, I, I will sell to, um, I, I will sell ladies wear, okay, to teenagers. This is your segment. But if you said ladies wear in general, this means that you will be selling to teenagers, to mature people, and old aged ladies, right? And so on. You, you can say, no, I will be selling to old aged people, ladies and men. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, how to divide the markets based on demographic factors, okay? All right, psychographic segmentation, this type of segmentation groups potential customers according to their beliefs, attitudes, and opinions. Uh, as well as their psychological characteristics. This is the psychographic. Now, some people, for example, usually the typical example in this case is about, <clears throat> usually the psychographic, psychographic segmentation is very difficult. You know why? Because it's very difficult to understand the psychological traits of people. Okay? No, no, no. Religion has nothing to do with this. Religion is as part of the cultural aspects. Okay? It's a cultural factor. Okay, so uh, most probably when we talk about cultural factors, we, we, we include it here in demographic segmentation. And sometimes, of course, the cultural aspects affect the psychographic aspects, but uh, not typically part of the psychographic, no. Okay, so when we talk about it's something about your personality, the character, your character, okay? Some people are showy. So when you sell them Mercedes, they will take it, okay? All right? Some people are risk averse. Some people are risk takers. So if it, uh, you as an insurance company, for example, insurance business, you look for people who are risk averse. Yes. Why? Because they, do, they are very afraid that they will lose their properties, their car, their, apart their apartments, and so on, right? So insurance would be a perfect solution for them, right? So some, in some industries, the graphic segmentation will be perfect. In others, it will not. So it depends. Okay? It depends. It's hard to measure. It ha it's hard to measure. For this reason, if you know that your product or service is related to the psych psychographic trait, sorry, the psycho psychological traits or personalities of people, then you need to focus on, on this type of segmentation. Okay? All right. Behavioral segmentation. This type of segmentation groups people according to the way in which they use and benefit from the product how they use the product. This is the behavioral segmentation. Okay, we sell cars, yes. okay? All right, so, but how the consumer will use the car? Like, is it for private use or for business use? This is what we mean here. Okay, even if it is for private use, all right? Is it for leisure time, having fun and so on, entertainment, or for commuting 
activities like everywhere every day you are taking it to taking your car going work to work and getting back uh, to home uh, going to pick to pick up uh, to pick your wife and children and so <laughs> all right, all right? By com like family purposes and so on like but daily purposes daily uh, routine okay so how do they use it based on the usage of the consumer you segment the market okay all right to be um to be more practical let me tell you something you can use more than one uh, base or criterion in segmenting the market you can you can, you can do that okay most of businesses do th do this most of businesses do this they use for example they use the psychographic segmentation with the demographic one they use, sometimes they use geographic, the demographic and psychographic all together in segmenting the market. I can use all of them. You can use all of them, of course. <laughs> but it will be, I think, yeah, like, yeah. sometimes you have the first three together, it's very clear. Uh, my advice to you is to go to, to, to different um, sources, okay? Read on the internet, try to get some examples of psychographic segmentation, demographic segmentation, and uh, geographic segmentation, okay? It's try. <laughs> try to have try to have some some real life examples okay and tell me if you got some uh, if you can find an example of uh, a business that segmented the market using two criteria or three criteria okay yeah. all right this is an activity which is very useful for you by the way it will help you to understand what we mean by segmentation okay now you understand what we mean by segmentation yeah. okay so you can define segmentation you can explain explain the, the assumptions. Yes. You can explain the characteristics of viable seg segments, yes. five characteristics, and you can discuss the criteria of market segmentation, criteria or basis. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Now you segmented the market using whatever, and you have a viable segment on everything. Which, which segment to target? Which segment to target? It depends on you. It depends on your targeting strategy. Yes. Okay, it depends on your targeting strategy. We have three targeting strategies that can be adopted by any business, okay? The first strategy is the niche marketing. The business here concentrates on a single segment, especially if the business is uh, uh, small, and does not have the resources to target several segments. One Just one segment out of the whole market. And as, a, and as an example of this is the high and mighty stores in the UK. High and mighty, what, what, uh, does, it do, what does it do? <coughs> they sell menswear for men who are exceptionally large, exceptionally tall. Okay, it's, it's a small segment. It's a small segment. However, they decided to target this segment because it's profitable for them and it matches their own uh, uh, limited re uh, resources or budget. You got that? Okay, so this is uh, the, an example of the niche marketing. Differentiated marketing, this is the second strategy. The business concentrates on two or more segments which differenti uh, with differentiated product offerings for each segment. So the differentiated marketing, we have uh, uh, here, the business focuses on two or more segments. Two or more, more than one. Two or more segments. Okay, with differentiated products uh, offering and... Service. Okay, so, as an example, as an example, you know, Holiday Inn Hotel, Holiday Inn, usually Holiday Inn relies heavily on businessmen uh, trips. Uh, uh, when they travel, from one country to another to uh, yes. for business meetings and so on the trip is usually of course like uh, just a one day two days during the working days of the week okay which means that holiday inn does not have a lot of people staying in the hotel during weekends right yeah. should they keep the hotel empty during weekends or they should target another segment they should target another segment, which is the family with the children. Yes. 
families with the children. This is what they do. They target the segment of businessmen, okay? And the, the hotel is, is, is full of businessmen throughout the week, okay? The working days of the week. But during weekends, they target the families with the children, okay? They offer the rooms with different rates, different pricing rate, I mean, and they offer them um, different activities uh, and entertainment activities to, to, to get the children happy, to get them involved in um, doing different new things and having a nice time during the weekend and so on. This is what they do. So this is what we mean by product, different product offering. Mm -hmm. This is differentiated marketing. We have two different segments, the segment of businessmen, with, we offer them this uh, um, service with a specific price, okay? And we have the other segment, which is families with, with the children, and we offer them rooms with different traits, okay? And the offer includes some other entertainment activities for children and so on during the weekends. You got that? Yes. So this is what we mean by differentiated marketing. Uh, the last one is the undifferentiated marketing or mass marketing. One, uh, this is about selling one basic product to the entire market, for example, the petrol. This is what we started our discussion with when we said that some products by nature are not differentiated. Okay, they are undifferentiated. And we said like the petrol, like, the, uh, like salt, like salt, like sugar, okay? All these uh, uh, types of products can match the needs and requirements of, the, of all customers. Although recently businesses tried to differentiate them, okay, but still when you go and you do not find your favorable uh, brand of, of salt or, or, um, or sugar, you will, you will take any other type from the shelf because you are in need for it. Example. Yeah, by the way, Mexico is a differentiated marketing too. Because there's a diet Pepsi and a lot So, excellent, excellent, <laughs> excellent. So this is a differentiated, a differentiated marketing. So it's not undifferentiated because you said at the beginning, Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola is undifferentiated. Everybody likes it. <laughs> not really. <laughs> okay, right? Very good. All right. So how many strategies do we have, uh, targeting strategies? Hmm. Three. The niche marketing, the differentiated marketing, and the undifferentiated marketing. Okay, so in targeting, you need to be able to define what we mean by targeting, and you need to be able to, to explain the three targeting strategies with examples. With examples. Okay? All right. Now here, once the owners of the business have decided which market segments they want to target, now you, you decide on the, the segments that you would like to target, they need to make sure that product offerings are perceived, perceived by customers to meet the needs and expectations of those segments. So how to position? This is about positioning, positioning the product. There is a need to position products or services in line with these needs and expectations. Marketers can influence this position by manipulating the marketing mix. Oh, the marketing mix will, uh, is the, the topic of session four of this book. The marketing, but you remember we introduced this topic in session six of book one, if you remember. The marketing mix ones, we said the four P's, projects, price, promotion, and place. Excellent, very good, excellent, thank you. So uh, this will be clearer when we cover session four of the book, inshallah. So this is about positioning. Now we understand what we mean by segmentation, targeting, positioning, okay. Here we have what's called the business's marketing information system. What do we mean by uh, marketing information systems? First of all, do you think that marketeers need information? Yes, they have to. Why? To sell. To be able to sell. To make decisions. To make decisions. To make decisions. Okay. To, what? to create segments. To target segments. To target segments. To identify customers' needs and wants, yes. right? Okay, to do all the marketing activities, we need information. We need information. Okay, so the marketing information system is uh, the different ways of gathering and analyzing information. Different ways of gathering and analyzing information. This is what we mean by marketing information systems. Some organizations have highly formalized marketing information systems. Others gather information in an informal way. Uh, okay, let's see. Here we have the three sources. Let's see. Like having 
talks, having talks with, the, with, the, with customers. This is not a formal process, okay? Uh, to talk with, with the sample of customers. Sometimes when we talk about formal sources or formal sources of information, usually it's something published by different agencies, governmental agencies in the society, okay? Another thing, uh, another aspect of, of being formal or having formal process is to have uh, like um, a documented process. For example, this is one of the, or, or, of the ways, but one of the tools, the questionnaire is, is one of the tools. Okay, three main sources of marketing information. We have the internal records. The internal records means internal, like from inside the organization. Okay, so the relevant marketing information gathered from sources within the business, such as sales records, okay, complaints records, information from loyalty schemes, and so on. So you get the information from inside the organization itself, from the records. You have records for, of complaint, you have records of sales, you have records of, of different aspects so, so that you can analyze the information in, in such records and get the information, okay? Yes. This is one source. The second source is marketing intelligence. This is everyday information about developments in the marketing environment gathered through publicly available sources of information and some informal talks, observations, and so on. This is what we mean by informal. Yes. Okay, so in the marketing intelligence, we have, you can do this formally through getting formal sources like the um, reports published by different governmental agencies about the population structure, okay? About the growth in some economic sectors uh, in the country, and so on. And you can get some information through having informal talks with sample of customers with the, some businessmen, with competitors sometimes, okay, and so on. All right, okay. The marketing research, this is the last way. This is formal, uh, this is formal research aimed at gathering specific data to help solve a particular marketing problem, which means what? We gather data, we conduct this research to get some information concerning a specific project, specific problem. So when you conduct a marketing research, you do not conduct the marketing research just to get information in general. Oh. It is conducted for a specific purpose. You would like to, to identify something. You would like to measure the success of a specific product, for example. Okay? You noticed or observed um, a, a, a reduction in the sales rate. This year, you'd like to know what's going on, so you conduct marketing research. Okay? And so on. So it's for a specific purpose. It includes both secondary and the primary market research. So how many sources of that of information do we have? Three. 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 Internal Three. records, marketing research, and marketing research. Easy? Yes. Okay. Here, this is the last point we have here in this session. It's about the difference between transaction marketing and relationship marketing. Okay. What do we mean by transaction marketing? The transaction marketing focuses on the final point of attracting customers and achieving a transaction. We would like the, the businesses which adopt this approach, they think of attracting the customers to buy from them just once. They do not, they do not focus on having a long-term relationship with the customer or on retaining the customer. Keeping the customers uh, uh, loyal for the brand they are not thinking of all these things. When they conduct the marketing uh, uh, activities, they, all they, tr they are trying to do is just to attract the customers to buy once. And that's it. Okay? This is what we mean by transaction marketing. It's a transaction. Okay? On the other hand, the relationship marketing, no. They care about how to uh, keep, less, yes, how to keep, to, 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 to get the customer and keep him, maintain a, a long-term relationship with our customer, to keep our customers loyal, how to retain our customers. Yes. This is about relationship marketing, okay? So here in the transaction marketing, the main emphasis is on the first transaction. In the transaction marketing, the main aim or focus on the first transaction. This approach pays little attention to ongoing long-term relationships between buyers and sellers. Okay, clear? Yeah. All right. Okay. On the other hand, Can you give us an example of a transaction? Of a transaction 
marketing. Okay. Um, any, let's think about like any, any of the supermarkets that you go to, for example, Metro. Yes. Hmm. Transaction or relationship? Relationship. Why? Trying to do what? Which which marketing activities do they uh, uh, conduct to keep you loyal to Metro? Discounts, yeah. Discounts. But they don't know any information about it. But if you went to Alpha and you found better discounts, you will leave them immediately, right? <laughs> which means that discounts can never be the only two to conduct the relationship marketing. So Metro is one of the transactional marketing insights. Okay? All right? On the other hand here we have uh, the relationship marketing. Now we understand it. According to this approach, we define marketing in a different way. How? Marketing is to establish, maintain, and enhance relationships with customers and other uh, partners at a profit so that the objectives of the parties involved are met. So marketing is what? Establishing, maintaining, and enhancing relationships with customers and the other partners. With profit, of course. But you need to establish, enhance, and maintain. This is what we mean by marketing under this approach. The main emphasis is on having long-term relationship between buyers and sellers. Nowadays, many businesses um, um, are adopting the relationship marketing approach because even researchers, researchers proved that the, um, retaining the current customers is better than and less expensive than attracting new ones. Okay? Yes, and you have the word of mouth, which means that you will attract more and more. But, okay. So here we have some courses or factors driving relationship marketing. Why? why businesses nowadays are adopting uh, such an approach. First, first of all, the global competition. Global competition has meant that businesses have needed methods of differentiating themselves from their competitors in ways that go beyond the transactional marketing mix. It's not about going and getting uh, an offer or a discount. It's something further, it's something deeper to, to keep, to keep your, your customer, especially that we have a lot of competitors in the market after globalization, right? Uh, and many markets have become fragmented into smaller and smaller segments, and thus traditional market segmentation has reached its limits. Some markets are by, by, like, by themselves are very small groups. Currently, we have, because of the globalization we had, because of the different sectors in, in different markets we have, we have now some smaller segments. And the smaller segments mean, means that the smaller the segment is, or the smaller the market is, the, the more homogeneous the market is, right? So at the end, at the end segmentation is not playing the, the, an important role in this case, in such a case, if you have a very small market. So you need to differentiate yourself different, differently. You need to be able to build a long-term relationship with your customers so, so that they are, not, they are not disappearing or they are not going to another competitor. The third thing is produce quality uh, has become high and businesses have found it increasingly difficult to compete on quality alone. Many businesses can produce with high quality. Okay, many businesses, which means that producing with high quality is not the competitive advantage that you get. Okay, because you are not the only one who can produce with, with high quality. Some others are able to do that because we have improvement and development in technology. Okay, so you need, you need a, a competitive advantage and you need to be able to keep a long-term relationship with your uh, customers. Customers are, are, are no longer brand, brand loyal, <laughs> okay? They are willing to change suppliers frequently based on the best deals. Yes. Right? Okay, so these are the factors driving relationship marketing. Clear? Yeah. So what did you cover in this session? Concepts, invitation, how to target the segments, uh, how to create the market position, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the, the, the five, uh, five 
Based marketing, marketing segmentation basis marketing for criteria. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the difference between transaction marketing and relationship marketing. Okay, very good. Simon, <coughs> what did you cover <coughs> in this session? We started by <coughs> defining what we mean by marketing, right? And then we talked about inside, inside out approach, outside in approach with the orientations under each, right? And then we started talking about segmentation, targeting, and positioning, yes. right? And finally, we, we finished the session by the, the, the difference between transaction marketing and relationship marketing. So, do you have any questions in this session? Any questions? Interesting? <coughs> yes. Okay? All right.